Welcome back, everyone. This is the uh, regular meeting of the Scarborough Town Council. We've actually been in executive session um, to discuss a legal matter regarding Avenue 2, and we just concluded that. Um, so uh, we've already done roll call and the pledge. Um, this is an opportunity now, item number four is general public comments. This is an opportunity for anyone in the public that would like to speak, and this is on any item that is not on tonight's agenda. If you'd like to get up and speak, uh, you can go to the podium, state your name and address, and you have three minutes. Hi, Ben Howard, Seven Windsor Pines. I'd just like to address the council again on the topic of the Divine Capital uh, proposed apartment complex on Haggis Parkway that was discussed last week. Um, last week, and I mentioned I was very wary of the project, and I continued to do some more digging uh, and some more research myself. Um, what I what I went for last week was trying to define the difference between Connecticut and Maine, at which point I brought up the Department of Labor's average salary for Maine and Connecticut, um, 43000 for Maine and 56000 for Connecticut. Um, one of the councilmen mentioned that, you know, Cumberland County does have a higher statistic, um, and I, I did go back and sort of research that myself. What I found was that Cumberland County's average salary was 51000 for males, and 42,000 for females. Um, in New London, that is 56,000 for males and 45,000 for females. Now, one really big difference that I found, though, when I continue to do research using the United States Census Bureau data, is that according to 2015, 39% of people in New London, Connecticut County, are making over $100,000, which is the target range that Divine Capital is targeting with this. And then in Cumberland County, there's only 26% of the popula population making over $100,000. Now, I think that's kind of a difference um, that should be discussed as 13%, and again, Connecticut has a higher population. Now, the second point I sort of want to bring up is uh, every time the councilman, councilman tried to ask Divine Capital to sort of include Section 8 housing or to get rid of the three-bedroom apartments, uh, they, they weren't really for it, and it, you're even quoted in the leader saying that they would prefer to pay a penalty. In my opinion, it sounds to me that this is a Lego project that you can go buy down at your Toys R Us. You buy it, comes with all the parts, comes with a set of directions, and what you build is the exact picture on the front of it. Um, and why, is, why do I feel it's that way? Well, Divine Capital really believes that there's no penalty that we could come up with that would cut into their profits as much as them having to go back to the drawing boards and redo any sort of drawings. Um, there's a lot of money here to be made by them because um, it, it's just not a creative idea. It's, I'm going to buy from the same manufacturers, buy the same nails, buy the same quantities, put it the exact same thing. Um, I would really like my community of Scarborough to be different, not something that I can just drive down to East Lynn, Connecticut and see the same exact building there as I can see in Scarborough. So I, I would really urge the council here to pursue more creative ideas or to really, as this goes through the rest of the political process here in Scarborough, try to force divine capital to come up with new ideas or something to be a little bit more creative. But thank you for your time. Thank you. Anybody else from the public like to speak on an item? Hi, good evening. My name is Mo Erickson. Um, I didn't stay for the Divine um, project presentation that they did, but ask them if they'll put in a pool. <laughs> That's always a great idea. I am serious about that, though, really. If we're going to have 800 new housing, I think we still need a pool in this town. We have everything else. You know I said that last week, but I'm going to keep hammering it home. But um, what I wanted to mention today was... Um, as I sometimes feel like I'm just a commoner here in Scarborough, I never get invited to the executive sessions, and I feel like the executive sessions are where all the decisions are made without any regard to the public. And um, I think all the workshops and all the executive sessions and everything else that you guys have, I think is just a facade. I'm really disappointed because I get the feeling that the Avenue 2, and I'm referring to Avenue 2, I think everyone in the neighborhood of Pine Point, where I live, already feels like it's a done deal. The land's probably been given over, and we're just token um, 
we just get the token voice. But I feel like you guys have already made the decision, and I think it's shameful. Thank you. Anybody else from the public that would like to speak? Going once, twice. Thank you. Public hearing is closed, or public comments, excuse me. Um, item number five, minutes for December 21st, 2016's regular meeting. Is there a motion from the council? So moved. Second. <coughs> any uh, edits, modifications, corrections that need to be noted? Mm -hmm. Not seeing any. All those in favor? That is unanimous. Um, item number six, adjustments to the agenda. There are none at this time. Item number seven, items to be signed. Uh, the treasurer's warrants. We'll do those as the meeting goes along. Under old business, there is none at this time. And under new business, our first item is order number 17-002, an act to approve the resolve to accept donations for the fuel assistance program. And I'll turn that over to the town manager for an explanation, please. Yes, this is a program that's been running uh, five or six years in coordination with Project Grace. And we do have a donation from Mr. and Mrs. Jeffrey Ertman that uh, must be approved by the council. Excellent. Any questions for the manager before we have a motion? No. Actually, before I forgot, actually, I do need to open it up to uh, public comments or public hearing. Anybody that would like to speak on this item? Not seeing any. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Any comments from Council? Council Chiazzo. So uh, I would just like to thank the Yurtmans for their generous contribution. They're very active in our community, um, uh, both Mr. and Mrs. And uh, Mr. has been spotted in several instances blowing a mean horn at the high school, backing up the, uh, <laughs> the high school band. So very active in our community and very appreciated the, do the donation and contribution. Thank you. Anybody else? Not seeing it? Uh, did you want to speak? Yeah. Councilor Hayes? Oh, okay. Um, uh, all in favor? And that is unanimous. The next item is order number 17-003, act on the following request pursuant to Title 23, MRSA 3025, and the requirements of Section 4, the Scarborough Street Acceptance Ordinance of the following streets located in the following developments. A, Merrillsbrook Subdivision, Millbrook Drive, and Brookview Court. B, Settlers Green Estates 2 Subdivision, Farmhouse Road, Weathervane Way, Weather Way, and Red Barn Circle. Uh, with that, I'll uh, ask the manager to comment. Yes, uh, both these projects uh, obtained their full subdivision approval with the planning board. As part of that, there's a, a, a dedication of right-of-ways. Uh, Angela Blanchett, town engineer, is here, and uh, I believe she is the one that's overseeing inspection of the, uh, the installation of the public improvements and can vouch for their, um, their quality. And so the final piece is for the town to actually accept them, and they become official public roads at that point. Excellent. Uh, with that, I'd like to open up the uh, floor to any public comments. Anybody who would like to speak on this item? Not seeing any. Um, motion from the floor? So moved. Second. There was a second from Councillor Hayes, I believe. Uh, questions or comments from Council to staff? Not seeing any. Um, is there a, um, sorry, there already is a motion. Um, all in favor? That is uh, unanimous. The next item is order number 17-004, act on the request from the Shellfish Commission to approve the allocations of shellfish licenses for 2017. Um, what I would like to do uh, is to take, um, follow the same procedure, but follow it in a little bit of different order, because most of our uh, guests here are here on this particular topic. Um, I would actually like um, Councillor Hayes to give a liaison report to give us an overview of what the issue is um, and what is being asked. And then we're going to open it up to a public comment so that you all get to speak. Um, and then we'll um, bring it back to the council for uh, qu a motion and questions and uh, go from that kind of perspective a little bit differently, if you don't mind. Councilor Hayes. So good evening, everybody. Um, my role has been sort of liaison to the group, and I've kind of participated with them for mm -hmm. a couple of years. And what you'll hear tonight is really th these, are, these are a bunch of individuals that are really committed to what they do. There's been a... I would say a lively conversation, and it's a lively conversation every year about what should we do about shellfish licenses and how many and that type of thing. I think what you'll hear tonight are folks, that, and it's, there, there's, there's both sides of the discussion. I think you'll hear that tonight. There's, there's good reasons on both sides of the issue. I think folks will get up and articulate those things. 
we intend to listen to them and, and kind of then come back and have a conversation. So just encourage everybody to kind of listen and we'll, we'll see where it goes. Thank you. Peter, would you mind, um, as far as the order that's coming, can you um, highlight the changes to the allocation of licenses so the public um, understands what they'll be talking on? Yeah. Yep, the, the current, so the, the 2016 <coughs> allocations, the residential commercial licenses are 30. The committee is proposing <coughs> 33. Non-resident commercial licenses are three. Um, and it's really, this is based on, on this isn't, this is a, a state guideline that 10% of the commercial licenses have to be um, non-resident. So it, it automatically by form or forces an increase of one, so it goes from three to four increase the over 60 commercial bushel license from one to three um, and then all others stay the same. So those, those are sort of the recommendations that everybody will be speaking to tonight. Great. Just a final piece of housekeeping. Uh, in the council packet you received a memorandum that essentially um, laid out what the proposed allocations are, the meeting minutes from November 8 where this vote was taken. Uh, and then there was public, uh, written public comment provided by uh, John Lyon and David Green. Uh, you may hear from both this evening, but that was provided to you um, in your packet. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, with that, I'd like to open up the floor to public comments. If you'd like to get up and speak, um, if you can come to the podium, state your name and your address, um, then you're welcome to speak for three minutes. Um, we do recommend, especially given the number of people here, if they we're going to have several guesses, if you can actually line up. That way it will go a little bit quicker. Um, but um, you're welcome to come to the podium if someone would like to speak. <laughs> uh, my name is Peter Angus, uh, 26 Old Blue Point Road, Scarborough. Um, I'd just like to say that um, I'm in favor of what the uh, Shellfish uh, Committee has recommended. Um, First off, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I, uh, in the 80s and 90s, I served on uh, this committee for 12 years, uh, actually 14 years, 12 of them as chairman, and then I took another stint on the committee for three more years later and served one year as chairman. Um, I agree with a lot of what I went through all my testimony with the Shellfish Committee, but I believe a lot of stuff I said the same thing as John Lyons said in, uh, in his letter. Um, between the both of us, John and I, we have over between 25 and 30 years as uh, chairman of this uh, Shellfish Committee, and we both supported uh, more licenses. Um, let me just read you. The first page of the Shellfish Ordinance says that to establish Shellfish Conservation Program for the town of Scarborough, which, which will ensure the protection and optimum utilization of the shellfish resource within its limits. And this is why I feel so strongly that, uh, that the licenses should increase. It's not just for us individuals that have done it, you know, forever. Um, I don't think it'll have any adverse effect on current license holders if there are more licenses because there's plenty of clams out there. There are three or four different sets of clams. Um, we're not going to dig all the big ones this next year. There'll be plenty left the following year. Um, last year I supported more licenses too and went before the committee and uh, virtually almost everybody on that committee last year said it's too early this year, Peter. Uh, a couple others testified, John Lyons or some, it's too early. Next year, next year we'll do it. Well, we got to next, next year and then there was still a lot of them that, that didn't want to do it. Um, I'm just saying, uh, as far as, um, you know, there's uh, age things that has a lot to do with this. Um, like uh, over 60% of our licenses are held by people over 50. So I don't, I don't think this is going to, you know, a few more licenses isn't going to matter that much. Everybody has slowed down some. Over a third, about a third of them are over 60. So it's time to get some new blood, and this is the year, I think, that we should get some new blood into the occupation. Um, you know, like I said, it says uh, optimum use of the resource. 
So that's that's what I want to do. And uh, the other thing I want to say is um, you're going to hear some other testimonies here, I'm sure. Um, the only way to accurate, accurately know what is out there is for have, to have surveys. And Scarborough had one survey this year. That, so that doesn't, that doesn't uh, tell you what's out there. Um, all the other information that's going to be presented is what has happened in the past as far as the resource. Well, that does not tell you what's out there this year or what is out there for next year. Please keep that in mind. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So um, next person I'll get, get up to speak can go to the podium. Um, I, as he's uh, going to the podium, just to mention, that, so we do have a timer. Um, being a good chair, I hope I'm going to give some flexibility uh, given the sensitivity of the topic, but if you can keep in mind that uh, you do have a time limit, I'd appreciate it. Yes, sir. Hi, uh, I'm Elijah Holbrook, uh, 137 Beechridge Road. And I'd like to say uh, I vote no. And I know a lot of people out there say there are clams out there, and that is true to some extent, but I can't tell you how many times I went out, busted my back just to see that I'm throwing away 80% of the clams I dig up because they're an inch and a half smaller than my ring. And it varies day to day. Some days I have good days, some days I have bad. But it's, there are some out there, but just not enough in my opinion. Thank you. He should run for town council. He's succinct. <laughs> it's Paul Erickson, 288 Pine Point Road. I've been a commercial clamor for a short time, only about six years, but in that time I've seen the bugger of it is when you get into the clams that are marketable, and I think that, wow, I'm actually going to make a day's pay. Then, I, as I turn them over, a lot of them are empty, and it's because the predators, the, they get eaten by the worms or the uh, green invasive crabs. And that's the real concern with me, is that there are clams out there, but when they get to the size that are marketable, the doggone green crabs and the worms eat them all. So it doesn't seem like it is safe to put on more diggers until we get that predator taken care of or because I've seen the same thing with the ground fish or the uh, scallops or the shrimp season we used to be able to go down to the dock and get shrimp but now there's no season I mean I used to be able to bring an empty pail four years ago and wait for the shrimp boat to come in right down to Pine Point but now there's no shrimp season I don't know if it's from overfishing and what the devil happened but I hate to see that happen to the uh, clamming I mean so I think it would just be safer to keep it the license number just the way it is right now. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else who'd like to get up and speak? Please help you uh, head towards the podium. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen on the council. My name's Dave Green. I live at 135 Beach Ridge Road. I hold a commercial shellfish license, and I'm the chairman of the shellfish committee. Um, I stood in front of all of you, except Councillor Foley, last year, and told you, quote, unquote, we arrived at a compromise last year. There was a lot of people that wanted to increase licenses, some as much by six. We came to a compromise on the committee. And we had decided to stay where we were at and see what happens. And I do believe the packet I sent you people, with the information from DMR, reflects that we did the right thing last year. Because 2015 is the lowest landing report of the last nine years. And it's 39% below the average uh, landing for those last nine years, it's 39% below. And that was done in the last nine years with an increase of 15% in licenses by six more licenses and six more diggers couldn't pull out the average for 2015 out of the mud. I'm sorry, we did the right thing last year. And I'm going to put the bottom line up front. 
I hope one of you will make a motion to preserve some of the resource out in the river, irregardless of how many people think they have a right to go out there and dig. The committee, and a lot of us on it, still believe that we need to protect the resource. I hope you make an amendment to your thing and we hold the numbers the same. I was the first person I know of to come up with a landing report to try to use some tools to base it on scientific and, and a little bit of research. I know it's the first year it's come up, but I think that's going to be a useful tool. We did not do a lot of uh, landing reports last year, uh, uh, survey reports last year. What happens, we found with a lot of these survey reports, there's, there's three different sets of seeds according to Mr. Angus out here in the river. But six months from now, those clams are getting predated on so bad from the green crabs and the milky ribbon worms, there's not going to be a resource in, in 10 years for a, for a wild resource of, of harvestable clams. And I'm, I'm sorry, I do not believe that the committee uh, made the decision based on the data that was presented. I don't see how you can take a year that's 39 percent lower than the average and start increasing six more licenses this year. I, I don't know where, where you think all this product's going to come from, but it's not out in the river. It is a, as far as seed goes, but it doesn't last. We're getting predated to death. If you don't think so, go do a little research on your own after this meeting and go look up Dr. Beal. University of Maine, Machias. And he's also done a ton of research for the last 10 years, and he's on the uh, 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 Down East Committee. And I, I hope you go and preserve the resource and not go with a whole bunch of people that want more licenses, because that's not preserving the resource. Thank you. <coughs> <laughs> Good evening, Council. My name is Robert Willett. I reside at Three Track View Terrace. I was the former chairman for eight years for the Shellfish Conservation Committee. I'm here to speak against the recommendation for adding license numbers. Uh, during that meeting that we had, there was not one fact submitted by the committee to support the decision on adding license numbers. And there was not one piece of paper presented to that committee to support it. We had all the stuff that Dave Green had, and nobody took any interest to even look it over. They refused to look it over. Um, Mr. Downs, the committee member that made the motion to add these licenses personally, told me and one other gentleman that we are adding more licenses to deplete the resource to starve out the predators. That statement alone I cannot support, nor should anybody on a council to, to preserve or protect a resource. We were also falsely informed that there are only eight commercial diggers in this town harvesting clams. So I got before you right here, I'm one of the three buyers in Scarborough. I got 21 books from 21 commercial harvesters that I buy from on a regular basis. 21. I'm one of three. That's almost 50% of the clams I buy in this town. And I can't buy half of what I bought four years ago from all of these diggers. Me and my partner went out today, we dug a full tide. Between the two of us, we averaged 94 pounds for a full tide. All these clams everyone keeps talking about, there's seed in the ground. The seed does not live. The green crabs eat them, the milky, tape, uh, milky ribbon worms eat them. And then you're just left raking up the remains of it, which is... 94 pounds. Um, so if you look at the facts that were presented to you tonight by Dave Green and myself, th there's no way that you can support an increase in licenses. It is, it is not there. Um, I've worked with this committee. I tried to work with the committee. Uh, I just ended up being a foot soldier for them. That's all I was. Every time I vote, you know, vote on licenses and stuff like that came up, my opinion never mattered. Sometimes I was even shut off, even when I was a chairman. Sometimes I wasn't supported to bring certain facts up. Um, and that's what's wrong with the committee. The committee's broke and something needs to be fixed about it. Um, 
Thank you. Uh, anybody have any questions? I hope I didn't come off too strong. <laughs> I'm really nervous, and I'm just trying to get it all out there. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. you, you there's no Any question. There's no Q and A. No Q and A. Oh, you have a question? No. No. Good. For comment. Q and A. Tim Downs, Jones Creek Drive, Scarborough, Maine. Um, I'm the one on the Shellfish Committee that made the motion to add the license numbers. I think that they're appropriate numbers. I would have liked to have gone a little bit higher, actually. Um, I believe what's happening out there, I've been doing this for 43 years in the river. I've been on the committee for a long time. Um, my dad was on it. My dad dug clams. We've done it all our lives. Um, I don't believe the committee's broken. But anyways, um, getting back to that. Some of the stuff that was submitted into your packet, and you can read it, and this is by Brian Beals. Um, I'll quote from his letter that was written from Harpswell. Beals' latest findings collected from field experiments in Freeport's Hurricane Bay suggest that predation is the divining cause of decline among soft shell clam population. He called it a double pronged problem. Invasive green crabs crush the clam shells, and milky ribbon worms, which live in the mud, attack the clams from below. His findings also disprove the reasoning behind the municipal enforcement of conservation closures where towns close off clam flats and hope that in time they will replenish clam populations. Beal closed this akin to doing nothing or praying to the zooplankton god, whatever that is. The point he's trying to make is that if you leave the clams there, the worms are going to eat them. When I spoke at the shellfish committee, my, my purpose of saying what I was just kind of like quoted about was that I think that the clams ought to be taken out of the mud instead of leaving them there for the predators to eat them. The more the predators eat, the more their population will expand and the more clams they will eat, and so it just further exasperates the problem. Um, we have a huge problem with predators. That's not questioned by anyone, I don't believe. Uh, we need to get the clams out of the mud. It don't do any good to leave them there. Why feed the predators when human, the, the, the predators are smart enough to increase their numbers, but we are not? I guess basically that's all I want to say. I mean... If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer anything. But I just believe that we need to get the clams out of the mud before the worms eat them and the crabs. We're taking a crap care of the crabs pretty much. I mean, we've got a very aggressive crab program here. And and Robbie was right. He's, very, he's done a stellar job with that. He's point on. Um, but the worms, no one knows what to do with them. These things are, grow up to six feet long. They come up from under the worms. They have no natural predators and they're devastating certain areas of the flats. You have to go around the perimeter of where the seed is to find clams. I know that some people out there say, you know, they're not making a good living. Well, that's because they're in the seed beds where a lot of the small clams are, instead of around the perimeter where the worms can't make such a good living, and there's plenty of clams there. I'm old, fat, and crippled, and I can go out and dig 100 pounds of clams, no problem. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else? Ed Blanchard, 146 Payne Road. I've, uh, I've had my license since 1991. I didn't start digging full time until about 10 years ago. Um, at that point, I had two jobs. I, had, I dug clams and I worked uh, full time for another company. Um, I, I do agree that there are clams coming, but it does seem like the multi ribbon worms just they just know where the bigger clams are. I mean, it just seems to me like we start getting into we start getting into the larger, you know, the two inch or two and a half inch clams, and and you're right into the milky ribbon worms. I mean, it's just like it's they're they're there ahead of you, you know. And I think we do have areas that have seed, and and you'll you'll go there like. And they'll be like, oh, this, this is awesome, you know what I mean? You see, you'll see plenty of seed, and then you'll go back, and it's like, you know, where did it go? You know what I mean? It, it gets eaten. You know what I mean? It, it seems like, you know, and then, and then we're throwing out the milky ribbon worms to the seagulls, you know, which is another huge predator, which we have absolutely no control over. I mean, they're a federally protected bird, but yet, you know, here we are feeding them bringing them in, 
and then you'll move over to another area to dig, and there's the seagulls eating what you've left behind. It's kind of like a, it's a catch-22, and if, if you rip, you know, for a long time, everybody believed you ripped the head of the worm, and, you know, that, that killed the worm. Well, that doesn't kill the worm. You know, I mean, it's a worm. You break it, and it, it's just like an earthworm. You know, I mean, it regenerates itself, so that's not the answer. But I don't think over digging and adding more licenses is is a good idea because we have we have a set we have a, I think we have a pretty good set number of licenses already, and and some towns are, are taking back licenses, you know, and I certainly don't want to I certainly don't want to go down that road, you know. I mean, I think I think the the number of licenses we have right now. I would be fine with, you know, but adding more licenses, I'm, I'm opposed to. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Erica Downs, Jones Creek Drive, Scarborough. I am also on the Shellfish Committee. And I was also in favor of adding licenses. Um, I had not only gone on one of the surveys, um, I do have my recreational license. I go out on occasion and also dig. Um, and I had spoken to people off from, you know, outside of the committee. Um, heard some of them say that they were in favor, some were opposed. And then, of course, I also listened to the people that came to the meeting um, in November when we made the initial decision to increase the licenses. Um, there were more people there that night in favor of increasing licenses than were not. Um, in the December meeting, Dave Green did hand out information to us, which we did take five minutes or so to look over um, personally my reasoning for not wanting to pursue opening up the discussion again was we had been given information in June from Pete Thayer from DMR and the information that we were presented that night at the December meeting when you looked at it the 07 through 11 landings were the same but the information we were given in December the 2012 landings were actually almost 50,000 pounds more than we had been given in June 13 was almost 40,000 pounds more 14 almost 23,000 pounds more than we were initially given well, that kind of makes me wonder how accurate and how do these numbers continually change? Not to mention, in 2007, the numbers that we were given in June and in December both matched, but yet, back in January 13th of 2009, the wa Working Waterfront Pilot Program the numbers that were given at that time from DMR for 2007 was actually 2,000 pounds less than what we were just given in June. So I have a hard time going with the landings reports, even though they're coming from DMR, when you're looking at years later, they're still not getting the numbers correct when you're asking for them. They continue to change. So that's why I have an issue with looking at those landings numbers and going according to that. Um, beyond that, um, Robert had stated that he has all of these diggers coming to him whatnot, and that he couldn't buy as many clams this year. I understand that, but yet I do also know that there's been times that the person that he sells them to was unable to purchase them, so the diggers couldn't sell to him if they wanted to. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Anybody else? 
Good evening. My name is Joe Delano, and I'm one of the non-resident license holders. I live in Freeport. Uh, I support adding more licenses. I actually served on the Shellfish Committee for 19 years. I was on the Casco Bay Regional Shellfish Committee, and this is the second largest seed set that I have ever seen. Yes, we do have a problem with crabs, but as I've stated, we're pretty aggressive about keeping those in check, but there is no known answer to the milky ribbon worms. I've seen areas where I've dug out of town here. When you turn the mud over, that is all you see is milky ribbon worms. Uh, the problem here is very minimal compared to that. And uh, we've heard, you know, about the decline in landings. Well, this is a cyclical industry and it has its highs and its lows and usually it runs in a 10-year cycle and we're just starting to get back into the 10th year because if you look at your packet there, I think 2007 it was very high. So uh, I think there's plenty of clams out there. And as far as the effort, uh, according to the statistics from the DMR, there were only nine people in town here that dug over 100 days last year. So I, I think that we could put more effort in knowing the amount of clams that we have on the clam plats. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else that would like to speak? Wow, that just blew me away. Nine people. Huh. Uh, my name is Chuck Maynard. I'm a non-resident commercial digger. And I'm not going to go back and forth with who said what here, but um, I think a lot of you people are being misled. I've been digging in the town of Scarborough for 28 years. We do not have the big set that some of these people talk about. Um, I do believe that we should leave the numbers alone. We don't need to over harvest and devastate our clan flat. This is not about just today. It's not about just next year. It's about the resource for our future. And a lot of these guys that are talking are talking like a year from now. I'm talking about the future. We have an opportunity to save what we have. And instead of going back and forth and every year we come back to you guys saying please don't add more licenses, these same guys that wanted four last year are asking for more this year a year later after we've already dug a lot of the clams. It just doesn't make sense. And then last year we got the lowest on record and none of it makes sense. So I think if we all put our heads together and come up with a solution to take care of this idea, <coughs> and the only thing I could come up with, and I think it's a pretty good idea that if, in fact, we do get this big set of seed in the future, which, by the way, Joe, it's not such a thing as a cycle. It, this stuff doesn't happen in cycles. It's Mother Nature that kicks in, and if we're lucky, we might get seed from another town. But it's not a cycle thing. That's what us fishermen have believed in years ago. It used to be a seven-year cycle that we saw. Now, supposedly, it's ten. It's not a cycle thing. It's all just a thing of Mother Nature. So what I have come up with is if we do get lucky enough to get this big set of seed is we should, my opinion, issue, I call it a seasonal permit, meaning if you get this big set in two years, those clans are coming too, you might be able to issue five seasonal permits, we'll say from June till September, and harvest those clans because what happens is when you get these set of seed, that set of seed is not lasting forever. It's only going to last a couple of years, literally, because especially if you add too many licenses, after two years, you've had, you have way too many diggers. I think we personally have too many right now, so if we can try to sustain what we have right now, we could definitely save the source in the future. This is not just about next year. <coughs> Two-inch clam can only last for so long. And so hopefully you all listen to all the facts that were presented to you. I think Dave Green's done a wonderful job. I think Robert's done a wonderful job. And hopefully it just continues. We really, it's up to you guys right now to say, hey, enough is enough. Let's think about solving the real issue. And by every time somebody, every time you get the small set of seed, there's always somebody like Peter Andrews that wants to get everybody riled up and say, oh, we're, we're, we're going to issue four or six licenses. It should not be done that way. Yeah. If you manage it the way I just said, seasonal permits in the future, that way you can sustain all your regular diggers, plus you can add in licenses in the near future. And then if 
if that was to happen, each and every year we can go back to it and say, can we, can we issue four more senior, you know, seen, um, issue more permits? You may not, we might not be able to issue more permits for five years. We don't know what Mother Nature is going to do for us. But I do know that we are the ones that are going to devastate the flats if we add more licenses. I think we have an opportunity to save what we got. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before we move on to other people's comments, because you uh, you're welcome to get up, I do want to make sure that um, everyone understands our council rules, um, and that is that we are not to make our comments personal, um, and they need to be um, factual. So if we can um, not make them personal by mentioning people's names, it's out of respect to uh, you as well as to them. It would be greatly appreciated. Apologize for not picking that up a little quicker. But uh, is there anybody else that would like to um, get up and speak? Dwayne Rope, 24 Church Street. Got a commercial plan license. I don't agree with it. Um, more licenses. The crabs out there are bad. And if you guys want to some night when we're out there killing crabs, come on. It, it's bad. It's a lot worse than you'd ever know. Um, I never realized it until I started doing it. How would you, you know? So, yeah, there is a lot of predators, and we're probably right at the top, but the crabs are, are bad. So, that's all I got to say. Thank you. Right. Hello, my name is Dennis Violet, 32 Ocean View Road. I'm a former harbor master for 15 years, a commercial climber, a commercial lobsterman. I've been on the flat since I was six years old. And what I, why I want some more licenses, I think that we need some younger blood <laughs> in this racket. You can look around this room and see everybody's got gray hair or no hair. And I think we need some uh, younger guys to come along and dig some clams. Last year there was two licenses given out, and those two people dug zero clams, not one clam. So I think three more licenses or four more licenses is not going to hurt a thing. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else that would like to speak? Jessica Holbrook, 137 Beach Ridge Road. I, um, I swore that I was only going to come for moral support from my son, who was real interested in, in coming down and trying to be involved. Um, I, I do just want to make a, a, a comment, if I might, about y your predicament. There's a lot of arguments because there's a lot of problems, and then there really hasn't been a lot done with this committee and its charge and its tools and, and what, it, what, what they use to base themselves on it's a vintage 70s ordinance. It's probably time to review that. It's probably time to maybe sit together with multitudes of committees, you know, maybe take in, shell, you know, not just shellfish, but ordinance. You know, maybe another committee like conservation. You know, you have some great other people with expertise in different areas of this town that already serve that could maybe come up with some out-of-the-box ideas to start addressing some of these predation issues. Um, the two, two key things, 156, I was the one that wanted the green light, red light, go. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, the, the two things I, I wanted to hammer home are um, the two licenses that were brought up. One of them was my aunt. No, she did not clam. She was not well. She is giving up her license. The person that is probably going to take on this license of those two that are now up on top of those six that your request, you know, is being requested, you can plan on them that the two that are being replaced are likely people that are going to dig. Um, now add six more. So it's not two, it's, you know, eight. Um, the other point I wanted to make is, again, it's really time for some out-of-the-box thinking. Uh, you know, my father's been talking to me a lot about these milky ribbon worms. Um, they're really gross and disgusting. Um, I've seen what he does with crabs, and there's a lovely pile out back in the manure. 
Um, you know, there's some really great concepts and ideas that I think if you, again, you reach out to some of those people you already have that have a lot of a more diverse knowledge, you could tackle some of these problems. Something I had mentioned to him is, and, and, you know, they have their own sets of rules about what conservation time is and whatnot. Um, if you were collecting worms as you were digging and for whatever poundage of worm you submit to the harbor master, you could get credit for your conservation. You guys have a fantastic new composting program. You know, maybe they might be interested in some sea creatures. <laughs> you know, they, 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 there's dynamics in that compost process they look for. You know, there's a lot of great things that I think if, a, if, if somebody were to take the time to revamp and look and work together and create something new to move forward with next year, you won't have a room full of angry people that are arguing about what to do or what not to do. It speaks volumes to me that the program is broken, the committee is broken. It's time to come together, meet with some great minds, and try to fix it so you can avoid this in the future. So um, again, I was just here to support you, honey, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mo Erickson again. Um, I don't know much about clamming other than the fact that my husband is a clammer and I have two student, two of my sons are um, hold their commercial student licenses. And I know that um, they work very hard. And when they say they dig a tide, that's about six hours worth of back-breaking digging. Um, and I know that um, they wish there were more clams out there than, than what are out there. Uh, oddly enough, this... Little, so this little magazine came to our house the other day. The, um, the, it's the newsletter of the Maine Clamors Association called the Clam Whistler. And um, one little part in here, I, as I said, I, I don't know about much about clamming other than um, I know that there are a lot of pre there are two major predators, the green crab and the worm. But people also have to factor in um, red tide and runoff pollution from that, um, pollution that comes from pets in the area, uh, the horses and stuff like that. But the other thing I wanted that they put in this little magazine was um, that the clamming is not cyclical and because they can't predict um, with confidence or certainty what landings will be there in three years because of the weather and climate change, and they attribute the, um, it says the, that the rise and fall based on juvenile mortality rates associated with water temperature. Unfortunately, temperatures are consistently increasing and do not appear to be re returning to historically normal temperatures. So I think that's something that we have to consider. Um, with climate change, I, I don't think that between the predators and the warming water that it's going to be favorable for more clams. But this was just a good little introduction for a non-clamming person. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else I would like to speak? Right. Yeah, my name is Ed Obarb, 12 Phillips Street here in Scarborough. I've had my license about 15 years now. It was a little slow bit of a start to learn how to do this backbreaking job. And I would say, you know, Five, ten years into it, you know, it, I was progressing, getting more and more of a yield. But in the last five years, it seems like I work harder, longer, and the yield has just gone down. No matter how hard I seem to get out there, either they're too small or they're not there, or you're just chasing them around. So, you know, Mother Nature has her way of doing things. And I think it's a little premature right now to think about adding any new licenses just because, you know, you know, whether the facts are right or wrong as far as the past or the landings of five years on the decline and last year being the lease, you know, I, I would tend to believe that if it's been published, there's got to be some facts to it. So I just think it's a little premature to think about adding licenses this year. That's it. Thank you. Anyone else would like to speak? Not seeing any, um, I'd like to turn it over to the council for a conversation. And what I would like to do is actually, if, if you don't mind, I'd like to actually invite um, Marine Resource Officer Ian Anderson to the podium, um, maybe to give uh, a staff uh, overview along with the town manager's help.
Well, thank you very much, guys, for inviting me up. Uh, I didn't know I was a local celebrity like that. Um, first thing that I like to mention, first and foremost, I care about conservation for the resource. I don't, income is not something that affects anything I'm thinking about here, which I understand is always in the back, back of somebody's mind when they're worried about a resource like this. Uh, one thing that stuck out to me, and Peter actually mentioned it first up, is that very early on in the ordinance, um, it tasked me with ensuring optimal usage of the resource available. Um, no, that doesn't mean that I don't need to protect it at the same time. So, get out my talking points there. Uh, we've been presented, both the committee and myself, with large amount of factual data from DMR and while flawed at times, we don't have much else to fall back on. DMR is the ruling authority in shellfish, uh, well, marine management in the state. Uh, their land age numbers are what we have available to us and at times they barely have them available to themselves. Uh, however, there's not any data other than a small number that Mr. Delano presented of year-round diggers that indicates um, anything in support of adding the number of licenses that have been presented to us. Uh, moving into April, when we re-auction licenses or re-lottery uh, re licenses, we'll have two available, as it is if we add none. Uh, that being said, if we add the number presented, then we'll be faced with eight new licenses and what could at times, depending on who you talk to, be considered an uncertain year. Uh, there were no rainfall closures summer of this year and rainfall closures for those that are unaware. If we get more than one inch of rain in a 24 hour period, there are certain regions in the Scarborough River and, uh, and Nonsuch River that will close down um, for at least 14 days. So if those are closed down, they greatly affect the area available to others to harvest. Um, now, Dave mentioned Dr. Brian Beal. Um, he's done a large amount of research coming as far south as Freeport. And if any of you have followed in recent years, Freeport and Brunswick have been decimated heavily by both green crabs and milky ribbon worms. Uh, those are, in my eyes, the biggest threat to our industry here in town and um, many across the state. Uh, our clamors here pulled over 3,500 pounds of green crabs out of uh, our clam flats in town. And that's no insignificant number with uh, 43 being the total number of commercial licenses required to do conservation time. Um, now, based on all that, <laughs> Uh, if it were down to me to recommend something to the committee, uh, I believe that we do have enough available that we could add one license in addition. And that license addition, for those that are unaware, Title 12, 66, 71, if we have more than, well, it's a 10% rule, let me say it that way. It's a 10% rule for every number of diggers that we have in town, we have to have at least that many out of town uh, commercial licenses. So as now we're at 30 resident licenses, we have to have three available. If we were to go to 31 resident licenses, we would have to go to four uh, non-resident. Now that four non-resident could stay that way until we hit 41 because we would still be over that 10% number. Uh, I think adding those two licenses in addition with the two that are coming up will provide us with more people available for conservation time um, and will ultimately be supported. Now that comes with a bit of a caveat and I take responsibility for this this year largely. Um, we really were lacking in the survey department and that gives us a strong lack of regional data to base a lot of info off of. Uh, so in the coming year up until we decide licenses for next year, um, I would like to see and like to be involved heavily with increased numbers of surveys, including different areas throughout town or throughout the, throughout the clam flats, as well as possibly
bringing in outside research from uh, universities like UNE who have a strong marine biology program and I know they've been involved with the aquaculture companies we have here in town. And we have like Brian Beal from University of Machias. Uh, this is something that a lot of a lot of undergrads and graduate programs are looking at right now. And I think it should be while maybe not easy, reasonable to find somebody that wants to undertake this project. Uh, and I think with all those things considered, that I'm very confident in my, my recommendation. Excellent. Other than that, I'd like to thank you for your time. If thank there's you. any questions, I'd be happy yeah, if you to. If you don't mind, are there any, oh, questions? Uh, are there any questions from counselors uh, for Officer Anderson? Counselor Chiazza? So um, one of the questions I have is, it, it, uh, are we the only community that uh, keeps licenses in perpetuity? Are there other surrounding communities that have licenses expire, or is that not commonplace? The license setup that we have is actually dictated by DMR. So our uh, shellfish ordinance, everything to do with our municipal shellfish management, ultimately comes back to DMR. And so even after tonight, our license numbers will have to be approved by them. Um, that being said, everything is very strongly controlled by a central, central agency in that. Um, largely speaking, they take recommendation of the council seriously. Um, as they don't have the time to get to every every field and accurately research, um, but no, we are not the the only town that has the license structure that we have here. Thank you. Other questions? I just want to clarify because sure. there are a lot of numbers thrown around by a lot of different people. Um, so what you're suggesting is an alternative somewhere in the middle? Somewhere in the middle, yeah. I, I do believe that the number thrown out originally is a little high. Um, but at the same time, I believe that there is room for growth, small growth. Um, that being one resident commercial, one non-resident commercial, for a total of that be four licenses that are lotteried this year. Thanks. Just for clear. Can, can you down. compare that to what is the recommendation of the shellfish committee, so that we have the numbers clearly in sure. our, our head? Sure. Yep. Uh, so initial recommendation was three resident commercial, uh, I'm suggesting that go to one, uh, and that would lead with the same 10% rule I said in addition, you would have to add the non-resident commercial. Um, there was also two over 60 licenses uh, looking at adding. I believe that the that deserves okay. a little more communication. The over 60 license in this town is a commercial license. They are allowed to sell their clams as opposed to a recreational license. They are, however, limited to one bushel. So that's all they can dig in a tide. Um, the over 60 license, I think, is a safe addition in that they are limited to one bushel a day. Um, and I, again, I come back to it, I believe that the added hands when it comes to conservation is worth the extra toll on the flaps, um, which I actually believe would be minimal for them anyway. And so they were asking to add two of those licenses. And you agree with that, or you think that? I agree with that, yeah. I, I believe that while the toll would be minimal from the over 60 licenses, I think the extra hands and conservation makes up for it. Any other questions, Councilor Donovan? No, thank okay. you. Councilor Rowan? Yeah, <coughs> just for, for clarity, for sure. uh, pardon my ignorance, but how could you approximate the, the weight of a bushel when, when people were referring to um, they were talking about weight? It used to be that a bushel was a volume measurement, um, but now it's 50 pounds. Thank you. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. There we go. Well, they will. <laughs> Anybody else for questions for the officer? I have a question. Um, sure. So, and I'm going to just reference, um, in an article that was published last year during the lottery for I think it was just one commercial license. There was a comment that was made that said about half of the license holders dig clams full time, but the other half don't. Mm -hmm. So let's assume that we give no more licenses. Sure. What guarantees that there's going to be more digging? Are not going to be any more digging based upon the other half that's not digging full time now that should be? There is nothing that guarantees that, and you do you do have that. You know, I don't care to call it a risk, but you have that possibility that either those 50% will come and dig full-time, unlikely but possible, 
but you also have to take in con into consideration long term that those licenses will eventually come open and should the 50% that are active now stay active then the 50% that are inactive possibly go to more active uh, harvesters and all of a sudden you've got your full gamut of fully active harvesters and your 10 to 15 to 20 past mm. where you were initially operating when you set a new license number. Um, so the, the reason why I was asking is that, so that means that also you can extrapolate and say that the three that are being asked for by the committee or the one that you're recommending, nothing guarantees that any of them are going to actually dig. Yes. Yeah, correct. There, there's no guarantee of that. Okay. Um, but again, on the same vine, there's no guarantee that the other 50% won't. Right. Uh, of right. course. And the last question I had is regarding uh, just the, the commercial license, and mm -hmm. I used to be a liaison. I should have learned this a long time ago, but are they, are they um, grandfathered for lifetime? It's like a lobsterman's license? Yes, unless the committee chooses to reduce licenses, which I'm, to, to be fair, to plead my ignorance, I'm not actually certain how that process would yeah. work out. There are probably multiple ways you could do it, whether you chose We won't go down that path tonight, don't sure. we? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But... Um, Except for that situation where yep. it's decided that you need to reduce license numbers, yes. It's a, okay. As long as you do your conservation time and pay your fee, yep. it's yours. Great. Any or other move. questions? Nope. No other questions. Thank you right. very much. Officer. Thank you very much for your time, guys. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, so with that, to uh, open up conversation for the council, there should be a motion. What I would like to ask, because um, uh, I understand that there might be some amendments, I would like to ask that at least the motion is the recommendation that came from the committee because it was a democratic process that was undertaken. And out of respect to their, um, <coughs> that recommendation, we should start from there and then either add or, or uh, um, uh, deduce from that point, if you don't mind. So um, I would um, accept a motion as recommended by the committee. So moved. Second. Uh, comments um, from the council? Councillor uh, St. Clair? Yeah. Um, do you want to wait? Do you want me to get my comments and wait? I do have a motion, uh, an amendment, um, but I want to take your lead on how you want us to do that. Um, that is up to you, Councillor. Um, I would like to put a motion on the floor, amendment on the floor. Um, I'll do that and then give, uh, if I do receive a second, yeah. then I'll give my comments as to why I feel that should be Absolutely. in place. Um, I'd like to move, uh, make a motion to move approval to change the 2017 proposed allocations to 31 resident commercial licenses, two over 60 commercial, uh, sorry, bushel licenses, and keep all 2017 proposed allocations that came out of the committee the same. Is there a second? I'll second it for the purposes of discussion. Thank you. Um, can I give you my so um, I was already on that path before the officer stood up and gave us his reasoning behind it um, I'll be very frank I, at the beginning of this when when we first opened this up and I started you all started giving your opinion I was um, more inclined to um, I don't think I've ever not taken a committee's <coughs> recommendation um, when I was reviewing the literature this week though um, I did notice that it was close at the committee. Um, it was a three to four, almost a split. Um, and I feel strongly that that committee is in need of some work. Um, there are some bad feelings out there. Um, watching and listening um, and reading the literature, this is not, this isn't how you guys want to be. I know that. You are not these kind of people. Um, some of you got up to speak and others of you were speaking while they were speaking. I mean, that's just so inconsiderate. Um, and it's not, I know you, I've been working with you guys for years and that's not how you want this to be. I know that. Um, you guys are hard workers. I mean, I probably want some of the hardest workers in this town. Um, you deserve to be recognized for that. But you also need to come back together. You've got to come back to the table and put some of this aside and figure out how you're going to come together to get rid of some of these problems. Um, this is your livelihood. This is how you take care of your families. Um, I, I'm, you guys are some smart people. And I know if you work together and work with the Marine officer, there has to be a way to deal with this issue with the worm, which, by the way, is disgusting. I, mean, I don't know how you do I honestly don't know how you do it. Um, I, 
I feel strongly that we've got to come up with a, um, a compromise here. I understand why some of you don't want new ones, totally understand that, and I understand why some of you do want new ones. I do think there needs to be some more young blood. You've got some of that in the audience. Work with that. He's got friends. I mean, we all know that. So bring some of those friends to the table. Introduce them. Take them out. You're inviting us to go out. Take some of these kids out. Show them the love of that. And I swear, sometimes when you teach them, they will come back. Um, and so I, along with the Marine officer, I feel like this is a compromise. Um, I know that it doesn't make everybody happy. Unfortunately, we never make everybody happy. I hate that feeling. Um, and I'll probably walk out of here tonight questioning myself as to whether this is the right thing or not. But I do feel strongly that we have to come to a compromise. Um, and I think this is a compromise. Again, I'm not, oh, I, I've never been comfortable not taking a committee's recommendation because you are the expert. But I am comfortable in the fact that by listening to the testimony tonight, it did change my mind coming into this meeting. Um, and, and listening to, you're the experts. Um, I don't have any clue as to what it's like to go out there and bust my hump every day like you do. So in that sense, I think it's important to at least give a little bit. And then we take this, we take 2017, let's get the data for next year. And if this doesn't work, I think it's important that we get on this a little bit earlier, not you, us, not you, because you've been working on this for months, but us, bring us into it earlier so that we can be aware of what's going on and maybe mediate a little bit, I don't know. But I do know that none of you want to walk into a contentious meeting. None of you are like that. You're hard workers, you know what it's like to have to work for your families, and you should be rewarded for that. I could probably go on and on, but I'm going to stop there. Any other comments or questions regarding the amendment? Councilor Rowan. Um, how, what, what are the mechanics of this uh, in terms of the amendment? Do we have to vote on the amendment before it can be re-amended or? Yes. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> I, I was just looking for clarity. What I, I understood resident commercial license 31 said, and what did you say on over 60 commercial, did you say two, two or? Two. Two, okay. And just for clarification, based upon um, Officer Anderson's comments on the non-resident commercial licenses will have to increase to four yeah. because you've gone over the 30 threshold. So that's actually amended as part of that. At least I, that's how I understood it. I thought it was, isn't that what's was pro proposed though on the 2017? It is. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I meant. So anything besides those. Oh, two, I apologize. Yep. I asked to keep yep. the same as yep. the recommendations out okay. of the com committee. Thank you. Yep. Councilor Chiazza, do you have a No. Councilor Donovan? Can I get a clarification that that what we're talking about uh, in the amendment is to go one resident license as opposed to three. Correct. That triggers a second license because of the 10% rule. Yes. So right. we're now at two yes. as opposed to what would have been three plus one. Correct. Two versus four. Right. And the other two are the over 60 in age and have restrictions on volume. Correct. correct. So that's okay. And correct. that's what your... That's correct. So your motion <coughs> to amend was intended to reflect what Officer Anderson said. Correct. Okay. <coughs> so just, so it's five versus eight. Correct. Right. Higher math. I'm really good at it. <coughs> it's four. Four. Four versus eight. Four versus six. six. How do you get six? No, it's uh, one, one, two, <coughs> four. Three, four. It's four, four versus four six. Four versus six. They're, they're two licenses right. that are going to be re lottery. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh, the other. The but, but that's, that's, so not that's, that's not included in that. Sorry, yeah. I, that's why I'm just trying to make <coughs> yeah. sure we're clear. So, that's for point, point of, of information purposes, the two that the officer as well as others have talked about that are um, up for lottery this year are part of the existing licenses and are not under consideration because it's part of the 30 that have already been allocated. Correct. Yes. So I do, I do have a comment. Um, I, reading through the material and hearing the testimony tonight, this is clearly a uh, divisive issue that's um, split that committee. Um, then there are strong feelings on, on both sides. I understand the need for young blood. Um, but I've heard enough to be very concerned about the health of the fishery. Um, the, um, I think that it's a lot harder to take away licenses once we've, they've been allocated than it is to add more licenses. 
Um, so from a risk perspective, while we might be okay adding licenses this year, I, I feel like there's a lot of risk to, to adding those licenses. And I, I have a great deal of respect for everyone who, who stood up and, and advocated for um, adding licenses and, and for um, um, and the, on the committee that voted for it. Um, but I, I just feel like we're, it puts us in a bad spot where if that's the wrong decision, it becomes much harder to, to take corrective action in the future. Um, and so I'm going to support the amendment because it's less than the six, um, but then I'm going to offer an amendment to go to stay at the 2016 levels. Thank you. How's it, Donovan? You know, uh, as a group, uh, you guys were probably one of the best groups of representative speakers we've had. Uh, every one of you spoke as people of good faith. I really, I, I got to say, uh, I can see you're passionate about it. I can tell you uh, the seven of us are probably the worst seven unqualified people to make this decision, but it's our job, so we have, we have to make a decision. We can see the Solomon-esque aspect of this thing, uh, that you know, you're kind of splitting the baby. I hate to do that, and the, you guys put all the effort into analyzing it and come up with a decision. Uh, I do think, though, that there is a whole series of risks involved in your business that need to be taken into account. How to best address them is not clear from listening to the dozen or so of you who spoke. So uh, I'm, I'm left at sea a little bit on this, uh, but I think being more cautious, and I think probably I would say the way in which we issue licenses could be reviewed so that, that maybe Right now, this idea of 15 are active and 15 are inactive, and the risk of some of those becoming active, it just it it makes the situation impossible for all of us as to as to what to do about uh, whether we're being prudent or not prudent in in this decision. So, uh, reluctantly, I'll support the amendment, but I don't know what the answer is. Councilor Foley, uh, I'd agree with a lot of. What Councilor Donovan said, um, I grew up in a family of deer hunters, and, uh, and I grew up in Michigan, so nowhere near an ocean, nowhere near clam flats, and I don't know if I'm swimming with worms ever again. <laughs> so I may be ruined for the river swimming, but um, or I'm going to have to find out where the, exactly they are. <laughs> uh, I, it, what's interesting for me is I had two calls prior to tonight's meeting, and both of those calls were in favor of. I had not heard uh, a lot from folks on, on both sides, so I, I, I thought the arguments presented tonight were um, compelling. I like the fact, uh, I like the amendment as given. Um, it gives a little bit to everybody, and I, I learned something from a former counselor once who said, and I believe it to be true, um, when everybody leaves a little bit unhappy, sometimes that's been your greatest success. So I will support the amendment, um, and then I want to learn a lot more about uh, how the process by which we uh, d make the decisions for increasing and decreasing, because that doesn't seem to be really clear for me, um, and that is probably my own learning curve. So, um, But thank you all for coming out. I think citizens being engaged is critical and important. Yeah, I think I'll kind of come full circle to where I started from. I've sort of been, you know, involved in the conversations I go along, and I think what you heard tonight, or as I said earlier, and I think it's been echoed by all the other council members, um, your passion came through. I think you all have talked from the heart about what you think the right things are to do, but what became really clear in this process, and I think you've heard it tonight, is we just don't have a lot of good metrics or analytics to be able to make good decisions. And I, and I think the question some of the other councilors asked about how do we decide when it's time to increase licenses or not? What do we base it on? I'd really encourage, and I think, you know, uh, you know, Councilor St. Clair really talked about maybe the, the, the community going back, and you heard a little bit from, from, from Jessica Holbrook, too, about thinking about how different processes for looking at how you, you discuss these issues, how you think about how you, what, what the metrics are for how you decide when you're going to open the flats and open licenses and those types of things. Um, I think there's issues around what do we do with licenses if there is a resource issue. So I think there's a lot of work that the committee can do, and I think the, the, you know, Ian was real estate and others were saying, geez, wouldn't it be great if we could get to this place next year and not have this same type of, of tension? So I'd really encourage, I, I will support the amendment because I think it is, as, as 
Councilor Foley said about it really is a little bit of something. It's kind of a compromise. Um, and so I just encourage the committee to go back and kind of roll up their sleeves and think about how we're going to approach this next year. Thank you. Councilor Chiazzo. So um, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but uh, I'm certainly not a marine biologist by any stretch of the imagination. I, I don't know what you guys are seeing on the clam flats. Um, I, I am a very analytical person. It strikes me that the data, um, everybody has their own set of data, and that's troublesome to me uh, because, quite frankly, sitting here as a non-involved person, I find it difficult to, to, to really know who to way as you know favorable unfavorable um, you all made very compelling arguments I've had more people listen to more people than we did for the budget and that says a lot so um, I realize this is a very difficult and contentious issue um, we are left here though as 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 legislators and as as people to oversee this process with a situation where we have to come down with something um, uh, you know if we do nothing uh, half of you people are going to leave happy half are going to leave upset and it's not going to be the end of it uh, if we give the committee exactly what they want, half of you people are going to be upset, and you're going to leave, and the other half are going to be fine. Um, I believe in the democratic process. I think a four to three vote is still a majority vote. That weighs a lot on me, and I'll be honest with you, I sat in coming into this thinking that if that's what the committee's recommendation was, I was going to follow that recommendation. Uh, I compliment Officer Anderson on coming up with a compromise. It is just that. Um, I, I trust his, his input as our staff representative um, to, to try and be impartial and open. Um, so that carried a lot more weight, and at the end of the day, that pretty much swung it for me. So he deserves all the applause he got walking up to the podium. Um, at the end of the day, this is not the end of it. I heard several of you say that. This is a long-term process. It's broken. That's apparent to me as a counselor. Uh, I would be very hard-pressed to have any faith in a system where the, whoever shouts the loudest uh, you know, gets the will. And we've got to find a way as a council to regulate this better, whether it's uh, more surveys, more data, finding a way to understand catch limits. We need to educate ourselves as a governing body to understand this process a lot better because ultimately at the end of the day, this is a town resource. And while you guys are the experts, we all need to work together to find a solution to this problem. It's not a short-term solution. It's going to take some time. You know, we can look to other communities for a little bit of guidance. Ultimately, it's Scarborough's problem. We've got to fix this. Um, I, I think this is the beginning, uh, uh, hopefully not the beginning of the end, but the beginning of a good process. I don't expect this to go away until April. I expect this to be back in our, our, our radar again very, very shortly um, because this is obviously means a lot to a lot of people and, and to us as well. So I'll support the amendment um, as a compromise. Uh, I, I think it's, it's uh, a good short-term solution, but it's not the end, end all be all. So uh, I'm going to take some of you guys up on that nighttime crabbing thing. I, I'm good at holding a flashlight, but you know, I, somebody's going to have to get me a set of waiters because my bean boots aren't going to cut it. I know that. So. Uh, so I will support the amendment, but I, I think uh, we have a lot of work to do as a council and as a community to fix this problem, for sure. So uh, to keep in mind, this is an amendment on the floor, so the primary motion still has not passed. Um, I do want to make a comment, but I would like to actually vote on the amendment, and I'll make, a close, I'll make up at least one comment at the, the main motion. There's no other questions or comments on the amendment. Um, I'm going to call a question. All those in favor of the amendment? And that is unanimous. To the, uh, to the main motion as amended. Um, any other comments before I make a comment from the councilors? Council Rowan? I'd like to offer an amendment. Okay. Um, I'd like to uh, change the allocation of uh, shellfish licenses to hold at the 2016 level. And is there a second? Second. Discussion? Any co Council Rowan? So um, I think, as, as I expressed, I just I feel like there's a great deal of risk to the livelihood of uh, all the speakers that we heard here tonight. Um, that if we make by making a hasty decision, um, it is much harder to undo, um, and that that it's just too risky at this point to to increase the number of licenses. And while I respect that we had a we have a democratic process and a committee that looks into this, and you guys are the experts, um, I've I've seen enough to be convinced that that now is not the time to increase the number of licenses. Councilor Chiazzo. So, uh, you know, uh, I, I firmly agree with the first do no harm concept and the first do no harm approach. And uh, if I hadn't heard all the testimony tonight, I would tend to side with you and say, what do we've got to lose by just keeping the status quo? Some of the things I heard that I found rather interesting was that you do need to turn the mud. You do want to get more people in that are going to actively dig. So I think by doing nothing, um, in essence, that is a decision, and, and that's not necessarily a decision on the right side either. I think it's a good, the compromise is a good, just that compromise. It gives 
an opportunity for some new people maybe to come in, turn some of that mud, get some more exposure to the flats. Uh, I don't think it's catastrophic if we've made a bad choice this year with that we can't correct. Uh, certainly in April or we, you know, worst case scenario, we can enact some kind of ordinance to address any catastrophic needs. I don't think we're at that point. It doesn't sound like it from everybody on the flats that we're in dire straits and if we don't do something now, we're going to lose it. Um, so I, 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 I agree with you. The first do no harm approach is, is vital. In this instance, I think by not acting, we in essence could be doing harm, better, more harm than good. Council Foley. Um, and I would go back to one of Councilor Chiazzo's earlier comments in that when I, you know, coming into this, I was pretty sure that I was going to support the committee's recommendation um, uh, to increase to 33. So I like the compromise um, because it also, if I understand correctly, and someone correct me if I'm wrong, the, the way we boost at the, that 30 level, so even if we got it wrong this year by the one, and taking that back, it wouldn't change that non-residential, right? Is that correct? <coughs> so, we're, so it's going up because we're at 31. Correct. Mm -hmm. Right. But let's say next year they decided they wanted to increase it by three or two. It sounded as what I heard was there were several years of conversation around increase, increase, increase. They didn't increase. Um, but if they wanted to increase next year for whatever reason uh, to get to the third level that was proposed today by mm -hmm. the recommendation, it wouldn't increase that other non-residential because right. they would have already hit that threshold. Yeah. Okay, so I'm pretty comfortable with that, uh, and it gets for me it gives that committee time to do as Council St. Clair said to regroup, to come back together, to work together. Um, so I'm pretty comfortable with the amendment as it is. Any other comments or questions on the new amendment? Not seeing any, all those in favor, raise your hand. That's one, all opposed, and that's six. Any other comments or questions on the main motion? Council Donovan. Uh, it's just because I think we need to move forward. Uh, some of the problem is obviously the basis on which decisions are made at the committee level. Science and data uh, are, have been often referenced. Uh, Part of it may be that the ordinance is outdated and is, isn't giving you the guidance that you need or, or is restricting the way in which these things are being issued in a manner that is getting a bad outcome. And that may be as kind of the ordinance committee side of it. Uh, I think the committee, the shellfish committee, needs to work on what it thinks it could recommend for improvements and changes. Uh, I also think everybody who resigned ought to withdraw their resignations and get back to work because you're the group, you're evenly split, uh, and, and, you, and you need to be able to present some ideas to the uh, town council and perhaps to the ordinance committee that would allow us to improve the situation going forward. But that would be my, my sense of where we ought to go with this thing. Can I, can I ask a, a clarifying question? What would happen if, if this measure were not to pass? Then um, the, it would actually, I would suggest that it would then go back to the Shellfish Committee, and then they would have to make a new recommendation because they are required to make a recommendation by law. Yep. Okay, thank you. It's my understanding if I'm not. And that would seem reasonable. I, I believe the officer was shaking his head yes. Um, any other comments? Um, so I'd like to share just a couple of, on the overarching issue. Um, first, I think that um, having served here for so many years, um, I don't believe that the Shellfish Committee is broken by any stretch of the imagination. It was broken 20 years ago when they used to gather outside in the parking lot waiting for the lottery to open up the next day, and there was all kinds of things that happened. Um, so this, this committee and this community has come a long, long way, in which a lot of you have been a big part of that. I don't believe it's broken. I think what it is is that we have some members that are simply unhappy with the decision of the majority that's on that committee. One way of changing that is changing how you communicate with each other. The other is um, becoming involved, and in every year there are um, um, seats that open up or um, renewals of existing memberships, and there's always a struggle to get members on that committee. Um, so there's always an opportunity to influence that by putting in your application to be a member of that committee. Um, I agree with Councillor Donovan. I really hope that uh, the two or three members who have recently resigned, which, by the way, that means there are three positions opened up, would withdraw from that and go back to the table and work at 
coming up with a better relationship, but also a better solution. Um, <laughs> sorry, that threw me off. Um, um, the last piece um, is, um, you know, I, I do rely very heavily on the committee's recommendation in areas in which I know I'm not an expert um, and never will be. Um, so I, you know, the committee's recommendation does mean a whole lot to me. I hope that um, you will also understand why I will support um, the motion as amended with its changes. I do want to ask for one clear intent, and that is that I hope the staff or, or expect the staff to reinstitute the survey process that was undertaken many years ago. I believe it was a three-year process where they took one-third of the clan flats every three years and audited them to determine what the real population was. And that obviously needs to come back because the data, first of all, the data will never be predictive. It's going to be historical, um, but at least it will be better than relying on um, data that comes from all different areas of the state and within the town that has different opinions. And, you know, um, as we've learned on the council, you can have the same data interpreted in two different ways, making two different arguments, and you know, don't know what really what's, the, what's correct. So I really hope that that surveying piece uh, comes back, and I do want to thank um, everyone who has commented. It's been very, very important. Um, so I, am, I will vote in favor of the, amend, or the motion as amended um, to move this forward. So if there's no other questions, I'd like to call a question and all in favor of the motion as amended. And that is unanimous. Thank you. No, I don't want to. Um, the next, um, we're getting close to the end here, I promise. Um, so we still have some business. You guys can, uh, if you'd like to take off, you're welcome to, but we're going to continue with our business. Um, item number eight is non-action items that we do not have any today. And item number nine is standing and special committee reports and liaison reports from counselors. And I will start, um, where did I start last time? I'll start with Councilor Chiazzo. Uh, so appointments, uh, appointments met. Do you want to give a recess or do you want to keep going? Yep. If, um, we're going to take like a uh, five second recess. Folks, if you can take your conversation outside, we'd like to really appreciate that very much. Thank you. Yeah. Ian? Ian, you want to just take it outside, please? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> He's the only one I can speak Goodbye, to. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you pick the guy who's got the gun to haul yeah. <laughs> Great. With that, uh, no one else is listening to yeah. Thank you. Back on to uh, standing and special committee reports and liaison reports, and I'll start with Councilor Chiazzo. Yeah, sorry. So, uh, appointments met earlier um, on, under, under uh, new management, if you will. Um, so we had a pretty heavy slate because it's the new year and there's a lot of turnover. Um, we had a total of one, two, three, four, five action items that I will uh, enter now into the, into the record. Uh, first one is for a Board of Assessment Review. Uh, we had one applicant, Jean Marie Katarina, um, and we moved her to a full voting member with a term to expire in 2019. The second position was on the Coastal Waters Harbor Advisory Committee. We had one applicant, Travis Turner. Uh, we moved him into a second alternate, alternate with a term to expire in 2019. The third action we took was on the Senior Advisory Board. Um, we had one resignation from that board, um, so we didn't have any new applicants, but we did shift people around a little bit. Um, we moved, um, we reappointed um, Philip Christie and Carol Rancourt as full voting members with terms to expire in 2019, and we moved uh, Donna Marie Collins uh, from the first alternate to a full voting member with a term to expire in 2017, and we moved Kenneth Simmons from second alternate to a full voting member with term to expire in 2017. Uh, on the Shellfish Conservation Commission, we had one uh, opening and one applicant, uh, the committee chose to table that uh, until later, a later date pending the outcome of uh, any reorganization of the committee itself. So we may be taking that up again very shortly, um, but the committee felt it was in the best interest to table that and let things kind of settle there a little bit first. Uh, last but not least, um, and I will ask the clerk if I need to read all of the names in or if we can put them in as, as uh, 
as one motion, but if you need to me to read all the names, I can read all the names. We can put it in as one motion. Okay. So, so everybody, uh, we, we voted it as a slate. Um, basically, everybody whose term was to expire this year, um, we continued their terms on, and they vary throughout. Uh, throughout different committees, but I think that detailed information will be available to the clerk on the website and those people will be notified as well. So if you are on a committee uh, and you wish to stay on a committee, you are still on a committee, we thank you for your service. Um, we can always use more people. The, the uh, outstanding committees with people still, uh, with vacancies I should say, um, is the um, ad hoc transportation committee. That's actually internal. We don't need to worry about that. Um, we have... Um, where was it here? We have a uh, board of assessment review. Um, that came up as um, being a potentially rather important committee moving forward in the next year or two, possibly with some, uh, some issues and the changes to the property taxes and things like that. So we are definitely looking for uh, some, some people to step up and try and fill that committee. They need three additional voting members and first and second alternate positions and that committee was the Board of Assessment Review. So we'll certainly be reaching out to other committees as well to see if there's some, some cross-pollination, uh, if you will, that we could use for that. Um, Coastal Water Harbors has one vacancy as a second alternate. Um, Historical Preservation has one vacancy. Uh, Parks and Conservation Land Board has one vacancy. Uh, let's see, uh, Senior Advisory Committee has one full voting member and two alternate positions open. Um, and Shellfish still has one voting and two alternates open pending uh, the result of any further action by the committee. So, so that's where we stood. Um, it was a very, uh, um, <laughs> a, a big docket for a short time. So I, I thank Councillor Donovan and Hayes for uh, getting all that work done in a very short amount of time and, and moving it along. So, and that's all I have for reports. Yeah, just quickly, um, public safety, there's really no updates. We haven't met since the last time we talked. And then two, I will just pass out to all of you, um, the finance committee meeting calendar and sort of the joint finance committee calendar with the, the, the Board of Education. So these are the dates and calendar and just pass that out. And I think the dates and times are on the, on the town website for those that are in the audience that are interested in, in participating. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Councilor Donovan. Uh, in mid-December, I uh, uh, had the first meeting of the Metro Regional Coalition. The seven towns that are represented by that organization, part of uh, GP COG, Cape Elizabeth, Falmouth, Portland, Westbrook, Gorham, South Portland, and Scarborough. Uh, the, uh, I'm inheriting uh, three joint projects. These are all joint projects that are being pursued. A uh, fire training uh, uh, facility, a coordination of opiate abuse efforts, and uh, financial benchmarking, uh, which would be the, each town submitting data on their different departments to demonstrate where they're expensive, where they're cheap, and can learn from each other as to what are good practices that allow that to happen. That's it. Thank you. Councilor Rowan. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Historic Preservation Implementation Committee met. Um, we had an election of officers uh, and did some goal setting for the year. Excellent. Thank you. Councilor Foley. None since last meeting, but I'm looking forward to attending a few coming up. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so as chair, there's a couple of, because uh, I don't really have any uh, liaison reports yet for the committees, but there's a couple of things as chair that I need to mentioned that really are personal comments, so I'm going to include them here going forward. First is that um, I'd asked last week, but if I can, um, with your first meeting, get a notification of when your standing committee dates and times and locations will be. So what I would like to do is actually post a calendar, a small calendar on the homepage of the town council, um, the town's website that says here is where uh, finance is going to meet and times on a regular basis, whether it's the first uh, second Tuesday, uh, Thursday of the month, that type of thing. So if you can get to me with that, I'd be greatly appreciated. Um, I also wanted to mention that um, we have been trying to, I shouldn't say we, I have been trying to set up uh, goal setting uh, opportunities for us and have run into a little bit of a roadblock and need your help. Um, I still haven't heard from three of you regarding that, but the ones that I have heard, I originally posted and said maybe January 9th would be, um, we would be able to work something out. That isn't going to work, so that's going to be canceled. 
uh, that was going to be a, like a five to seven um, o'clock type setting. So I'm going to reach out again to you um, to try to uh, schedule that. Um, and uh, please, if you can respond back quickly, I'd <coughs> greatly appreciate it. Um, believe it or not, February 1st marks the end of the first quarter. So I'd like to have goal set before then is really my goal. Um, and last, as a council, we're all invited um, to the GP COG um, session tomorrow evening. I believe it starts at 6.30, and that is at the Gorham Municipal Center at the, um, I can't remember his first name. It's, uh, his last name is Burley. Burley um, Lovett. Burley Lovett. No, that's the first name. That's right. Burley, sorry. The Burley Lovett um, um, Auditorium, which is the town council chambers. But we have that meeting tomorrow night if you would attend. And uh, with that, uh, town manager report. Good. You've taken two of my items away. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I was pleased to attend the Martins Point Healthcare uh, facility here in Scarborough. They had a grand opening ribbon cutting this morning. Uh, extremely well attended. A uh, fair amount of staff, but uh, there were a, a number of folks from SEDCO, a number from my staff from Community Services. Um, as you may or may not recall, they've accommodated about 2,000 square feet of community space in that facility. And we've already uh, been working with them and we'll be running some of our senior WOW programs out of that space, the weekly luncheons, um, there's a couple of other standing programs, as will uh, Southern Maine Agency on the Aging is going to be using it in a similar kind of frequent um, fashion. And we hope and expect to kind of grow that usage as well. Uh, beyond our use, it's uh, billed as being generally available for community use. So um, I think they're going to need to work out their logistics uh, of, of how that all works for them. Um, but just a, a wonderful facility, and I was certainly pleased to be part of that, um, that whole process. Carol Rancourt, on behalf of uh, the Senior Advisory Committee, was also there and, and provided some remarks. I want to report that uh, we did receive good news on our workers' comp insurance. We're part of a risk pool, and because of our participation in what's called a leader program, we get an 8% credit, which amounts to $33,626, and on top of that, a dividend of about $17,500. So it's about a $50,000 reduction on our workers' comp costs. And um, you saw at your places this evening, the audit is in. I'll be working with Chairman Baybine to schedule a joint uh, presentation for the Council and the Board of Education to meet with its auditor and receive the financial reports. Uh, and lastly, Winterfest is scheduled this year. Um, it was looking good until recently, but I'm still hopeful. It's scheduled for Saturday, January 14th, with a make-up date of February 18th. And we're certainly hopeful to get that um, accomplished uh, on January 14th. Thank you. What are the times, Tom? I'm sorry. I believe it starts at noon for open skate, and then activities will run through the afternoon until 5. Great. <coughs> um, council member comments. Uh, I'll start with uh, Councilor Foley. Uh, just one. I also would love to see a pool in Scarborough, particularly <laughs> now that they have talked about these lovely worms. Um, <laughs> I think my triathlon training in a pool would be fantastic. So I'll leave it at that. So Mo Erickson, I'm going to work on that pool. <laughs> Councilor Rowan? I would also like to see a pool. <laughs> Councilor Donovan? Uh, the ordinance committee uh, schedule is going to be the first Thursday of each month at 4 o'clock. Uh, we'll have agendas uh, uh, online three days before. Is that am I correct in saying that? It could be seven, to three to seven days. Three to seven days. So people will be able to see. We're going to have an active year, uh, so uh, uh, try and hold it late in the afternoon for the benefit of everybody. Uh, I did see something that I thought was. Uh, uh, very nice. The, uh, uh, it was in the paper this week, or maybe last week. Patriot Subaru employees donated $45,000 to Habitat for Humanity of Greater Portland for their new 13-home build in Scarborough. Uh, uh, the executive director for Habitat for Humanity said, Patriot Subaru's extremely generous donation is an unmatched demonstration of corporate care and dedication to doing the right thing. And I thought they should be recognized for that nice contribution. That's a lot of money. A lot of money. Excellent. Thank you. Councilor Hayes. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. And that's, that's it for tonight. Thank you. Thank you.
Chiazzo? I'll mirror the same thing. Keep it short. Happy holidays and uh, happy new year to everybody. And uh, for my um, uh, closing comments, and I will mention just because it will, um, we are actually going to be closing by going into another executive session um, to discuss the uh, town manager's uh, personnel matter relating to the town manager's evaluation. But for closing comments, I, uh, happy new year. I want to say thank you. Uh, the Public Works Department um, every year does an incredible job. First storm, it went very smooth. I think that um, pretty much everyone was happy. I um, also want to mention that um, um, although there's always been this uh, little bit of fireworks here and there, especially in my neighborhood, um, I got to tell you, this year, um, and I've been a pretty heavy cynic of uh, the fireworks ordinance um, and people using fireworks, but um, this year, I got to tell you, it went very smooth, and I don't know if it's because of the heightened focus and the survey or, um, I mean, it was done early, it was done politely, um, and it was put to bed very early so that it wasn't keeping everyone up. Um, for some of us who go to bed at 9 o'clock at night um, on New Year's Eve. But um, I thought it was, a, I, and I haven't heard anybody else complain, so I <coughs> thought it was great, and maybe that's what we need is education. Um, I do want to say I hope that the Ordinance Committee, um, now that the Governor has signed the proclamation regarding recreational marijuana, um, and that is going to become effective January 30th, I'm um, in speaking with staff. I, I do know that there are some um, inquiries at the best way to explain it. So I hope that that might be the first item that is taken up so that we can um, address that uh, from a policy perspective um, and that we get to work on that. And then last, uh, regarding tonight, it's always nice to have um, uh, citizens come, especially in the force that they came tonight, to talk about whatever issue it might be, and it was tonight about shellfish. Um, you know, Councillor St. Clair made it very clear, and, and she's right, because I've sat as the liaison. My grandfather was a clam digger. My father actually was a marine resource technician back in the 70s where he would go around to clam flats and check uh, during red tide and temperatures and uh, clam shacks. And um, he's been run out of a few towns, and I believe Scarborough might have been one of those back in the day. Um, again, that was the 70s, so it was way before anybody in this room was around, uh, except for maybe uh, one, one or two. Um, you know, they work hard, and it's, it's tough, and it's passionate. Um, I, I just, what, the one piece that I disagree with wholly is to suggest that the committee's broken. Um, the committee's not broken. The committee um, did what it did or did what it needed to do. We may not agree with the decision, and hopefully what we were able to compromise with tonight will set them back on a new path. Um, the three members that resigned as a result of the disagreement hopefully will relinquish or uh, um, take that back and, and really work on the committee because um, I think it's working. Personally, I think it's working. We just need to uh, communicate better like we do at the town council level as well. Uh, with that, um, if there's no other uh, comments, um, the next item is order number 17-005, act on the request for an executive session pursuant to Title I of MRSA 405.6.C regarding a personal matter relating to the town manager's evaluation and um, to only, um, I can't think of the word, to um, come back into um, public session for the purposes of adjournment. Is that okay? okay. Is there a um, second? Second. All in favor? Thank you and have a good night, everyone. Absolutely. You need me to sign? Yes, please. You're going to take a lunch and you